Hi, I'm Rachel here with my cat Leia, and this is my Friday. I'm going to highlight two books that I hope to get to and through before the end of the month. They both have a sort of title that denotes having guests over, and uh, they were both published last year and are about Jewish themes, so I think of them very similarly, although, although the topic and the historical timeline are different. This is The House Guest by Kim Brooks, and it's about um, American Jews and European refugees in uh, the early 40s when the Holocaust was going on. And I will read from the flap. From the racetracks at Saratoga, to the streets of Chicago, to the crumbling elegance of Second Avenue's Yiddish theaters, The House Guest is a compelling story about identity and yearning set on the eve of America's involvement in World War II. It's the spring of 1941, and an influential Manhattan synagogue has burned to the ground, drawing the war raging in Europe frighteningly close to home. Meanwhile, a small town rabbi in upstate New York asks a member of his congregation, a junkyard owner na named Abe Auer, to shelter a European refugee. Abe accepts, unaware that the woman coming to live in his home is a volatile and alluring actress whose mysterious past and hidden motives will create a web of intrigue across the town. But when she disappears and Abe becomes consumed by his desire and by news of the atrocities emerging from war-torn Europe, he abandons the security of home for a journey that will bring him into contact with actors and activists, as well as the memory of his own long-dead brother. The House Guest is a startling novel that explores the experience of, of America's Jews on the eve of the Holocaust, as masses of refugees seeking to escape Europe are turned away from American shores, and heralds the arrival of a bold and important new voice in fiction. So yeah, a lot going on in this. Uh, looking forward to getting to it. This one, it turns out, is much more contemporary. It's The Dinner Party by Brenda Janowitz, it says on the back. This will be the night the Golds of Greenwich meet with the Rothschilds of New York City. The Rothschilds are stuff of legend, and when Sylvia finds out that her youngest of three is going to bring her new boyfriend to the Passover Seder, she's giddy. But when she finds out that his parents are coming, she darn near faints. Making a good impression is all that she thinks about. Well, almost. She still has to consider her, her other daughter, Sarah, who will be coming with her less than appropriate beau and his overly dramatic Italian mother. But the drama won't stop there because despite the food and the wine, despite the new linen and the fresh flowers, the holidays are about family. Long forgotten memories come to the surface, old grievances play out, and Sylvia Gold has to learn how to let her family go. So in comparison to the other one, this one seems rather light and inconsequential, but there's a lot in this that I kind of like. I certainly love uh, holiday drama novels, and uh, setting it around Passover gives it a unique Jewish flair. And I also have loud Italian relatives, so I'm sure I'll love to see how they fit into this too. So it seems like it'll be a lot of fun. So lately these videos have been about me showcasing books that I'll hope to read in the future while I'm desperately trying to catch up on books that I had talked about in earlier videos, so I thought I'd give a little bit of an update on things that I've actually read recently that I've talked about in earlier videos. It's been a really great reading month for me. I've really loved almost everything that I've <laughs> been reading. Um, one of the things that I didn't like quite as much was uh, Infomocracy by Malka Older, which I listened to on audiobook. It was just very dense with politics and didn't have a lot of uh, deep character development. It wasn't really my thing. Although for what it was, a uh, futuristic exploration of politics and a worldwide global stage that uh, was eerily similar to issues going on today, it was still pretty fascinating, just not my thing. But these two books were really much more up my alley. Like The Innocence by Francesca Siegel, which I believe is the more British way of uh, pronouncing her last name, which is a modern day retelling of, of The Age of Innocence by Edith Wharton, but this time it takes place in a uh, modern London Jewish uh, suburb. And I really think, uh, I realized what I probably should have even before I started was that it just doesn't uh, translate very well. The closed off uh, world of uh, the 1870s in New York is just way too remote from anything uh, going on in uh, modern day Jewish London. It's a much more open time, a much more accepting time. And uh, if anything, I thought that uh, the love triangle, which is the centerpiece of both of the novels, really didn't work so much in this one. 
But what really did work was uh, how Siegel uh, was a wry commentator on uh, the social mores of the community, and that felt much more like what Wharton was trying to accomplish in her book. And uh, I thought that uh, beyond that love story, uh, the situation of the London Jews and of the world they were trying to create and their personalities, and that, that stuff was really fascinating and it, it really came alive for me. And this was a book that I, I debated giving uh, five stars to and I ultimately gave it like four, 4.5 stars. <laughs> but uh, that was mostly because uh, insofar as a uh, adaptation goes, it really wasn't the best fit for the type of story that The Age of Innocence was telling, but uh, in terms of uh, critiquing this particular community and the people in it, it was it was really fascinating. And just recently I finished The People of Forever Are Not Afraid by Shani Boyanju, which is uh, interconnected stories about three girls from a small town in Israel and their experiences in the IDF. And it was just a really stunning, disquieting, thought-provoking, a very different uh, look of is on Israel than I'd ever read before. I mean, this small town was uh, far from uh, the Jerusalem or Tel Aviv, which is usually the setting. It's very remote. It has a lot of sort of racially tense history because um, uh, these characters were of Mizrahi heritage. They were uh, of Middle Eastern Jewish descent, and they were sort of, their ancestors were sort of uh, put into that community by the Ashkenazi Jews, the Eastern European Jews. Uh, it's um, part of the sort of racial tension of that area. Um, and so that was a backdrop for several of these stories. And then of course, so was the army and uh, the things that they experienced. They were, all in, in, they were all in somewhat combative situations where they saw violent things happen and uh, Boyanju got into the heads of the girls and their situations, but also into say, um, an Egyptian uh, border watcher on the other side of the wall or a, tr a sex trafficked Eastern European girl who found herself there, or Sudanese refugees uh, desperately trying to escape into Israel and just gave a broader picture in that way of the types of conflicts, uh, various conflicts that are going on. And of course, uh, we were also at the checkpoints with uh, Palestinians and seeing that tension. And it was also just uh, a big reminder about how these soldiers are uh, young teenagers and how this is sort of a buildings roman that is uh, unique to Israel about you know how you get out of high school and you have all of those uh, drives of being a teenager your sexual drives your growing up drives and then you're handed a gun and put into tense situations and have to follow uh, strict orders and uh, so that was pretty fascinating and then these were female soldiers so there of course was sexism and uh, to the extent where I think in some of the later chapters uh, things got a little melodramatic with some of the plots that Boyanju brought in. Uh, that's what kept me from giving it five stars. I thought maybe she uh, transcended into shock value with some of her later stories and, and that it wasn't as authentically thoughtful. But at the same time, you really can't uh, accuse her of melodrama. Her, uh, her writing is just so blunt and direct and her characters are unsentimental and it just really gives you so much to think about and it's just some so disquieting and um, I just I, I think it was a really great read. I mean these are both books that maybe a couple of years ago I would have given five stars to. I mean when I started on Goodreads I was kind of like Oprah like here's a five star for you and a five star for you and a five star for you. But uh, I guess that's the fascinating thing about getting more into reading again, and I'm reading more books as well, is that I'm starting to get a little more critical, and I just thought these are great books, but I couldn't quite give it that five. I don't know, maybe I'll change my mind. I mean, for me, the most important thing anyway is my written reviews, not the star rating, and so I, I give everything written reviews. <laughs> so that about covers it for me now. I'd love to hear about what you're reading, and how you rate books, and if that's changed over the years, if you gotten more or less invested into reading. And I'm also so happy that Leia stuck with me for uh, the present anyway. Earlier in the evening, she was moving around a lot and not wanting to stay with me. And I rely on her for my atmospheric ambiance. <laughs> but now I guess it's getting late and I ought to sign off. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.